everyone, and welcome back to episode two of Let's Have a Drink. I'm your host, Azizet, and I'm Shamari, <laughs> and this is... Goddamn. Tell them your name. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> was it ready? Just keep Wait, going. This is funny. This is just keep going. No, you're not putting this in there. I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably gonna go in there. Tell them who you are. How you doing, everybody? My name is Bryant. Um, I'm currently an accountant at one of the big four accounting firms, and I also have a financial blog. I'll teach you all some financial tips on how to manage your money. So check it out. Z will put the link in the description below. So click that button. True. 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 Okay, so um, the show today, we are drinking some wine, just like another little wine night, and let's get this cracking. What kind of wine is it? Pinto Grigio. Pino! It's Pino! Pino <laughs> Grigio. My bad. Pinto Grigio. Pinto Grigio. <laughs> um, let me try to see like what percentage. Ooh, we have 12% of alcohol today. Mm. Mm, that's strong. Not, that's not getting that's strong, bit. okay? Because I think the first, yeah, our first wine night we had, it was like 10.5 yes, or something. 10. And I've never, have you ever had Pinot Grigio before? I don't believe so. Is that like a dry wine or like what kind? I, I think know. it's dry. Yeah, I, think I was it's about dry. to drink it, but I'm like, let me not be petty and drink off the glass. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good. Cool. I posted the other day saying like, it was a woman saying a man shouldn't drink wine. And I thought that was so crazy to me because. As you sip. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's definitely kind of dry. Yeah. It's, it's like, again, on like the maturity scale, right? For the wine, it's like, I feel yeah. like a grown woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. feel like you need some cheese yeah, and crackers for this. Like, Definitely, yeah, this is a, uh, I'm on a date with a guy, like, or, you know, I'm just on a date type wine. That's, you don't want that super fruity. This is like telling somebody, I'm about my business. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. I think this is really telling people I'm dry. Uh, you dry? Mm. I feel like this is like a um, big ball and brand. I feel like you True. wouldn't drink LeVar this. LeVar Ball would we'll drink this. Actually, probably. <laughs> what? Have y'all not watched the show? You he said drinks drink milk. milk? Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. like, that was so random. Yeah, I was like, you <laughs> drink milk on the milk. show? They don't watch the show. I watch yeah, it. Yeah, I don't, because I'm like, milk. I what does it come on? It it's comes on Facebook. on Facebook. Oh, see, I don't go on Facebook. Wait, so f- a Facebook show? It's a Facebook show. Like Facebook Live? or No, like- it's a Facebook show. Like, all the episodes are on there. Facebook produces it and everything. I never knew Facebook had, like, a platform to produce. Because only time I go on Facebook... What I see on Facebook is people we went to high school with that are just they doing things in their lives. Great things. Shout Great out to Richie's. Woo! We are all Richie's alumni. Yep, we are. Oh my god, that's so awesome. Yeah. I've known Brian since is it middle school? It is. I think it was seventh grade. Maybe. Oh my god, I hated him in middle school. We actually became friends because we had a history and thought together, and we sat right next to each other. He used to cheat. Never cheated. Miss Patak, if you're watching this, he very cheated on astute. all of our exams. Very astute. He's lying. <laughs> he cheated on me. Oh. Never did. And I still failed. <laughs> but he was passing. <laughs> no, I was joking. Um, okay, so now that we've gotten that out the way, it's time to pick our topic. Oh, here we go. I was like, where did it go? From our topic jar. Let's see. So, oh. so, Brian, if you would do the honors. Close your eyes. I gotta yeah, close my you eyes. You do. You do have to close your eyes. Can't cheat? No. no. What? I, see? Close your eyes. Cheating in high school? Still cheating. <laughs> it's still cheating now? Oh my God. My so you gotta direct my hand because I don't no. know where the bowl okay. is. There you go. Alright. What we getting? What we getting? Are you sure that's the one you want? So the topic of discussion today is people saying the N word. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Who do you, are you comfortable with saying it? Do you say it? Do you not say it? All that kind of stuff. So I guess we could start with. Do you actually believe that the N-word has been taken back and, be, and been, what is the, what are they, people always say, like, we took the word back and then, like, we, like. Made it a positive. Yeah. In a sense. Or... Yeah. Do you actually think that's true? Like, in a way, yeah. I feel like black people definitely, like, took a hold of the word nigger or nigga 
um, and made it their own. But I don't know. I say it. Dad, you too. It's like Same. the word bitch for me. Like it's just a term of endearment, kind of. Bitch, nigga, nigga. <laughs> so how do you all feel about other races saying the word? Okay, other races saying it? Yes. Um, non-black individuals. Okay, there's differences. Race and ethnicity. Oh, okay, non-black individuals. Okay, so I'm not fully comfortable with people of the Caucasian race um, saying from the, it. From the mountains of from Caucasus. Mountains of Caucasus. <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't think I'm comfortable yet. Um, I feel like I've seen a lot of comedians say this, but like the way they say it, I feel like it's a lot more like <laughs> like behind it and just makes somebody crawl. Yeah. I don't like it. Like I don't feel like it's but the same white thing. White comedians? Oh, but no, black know. comedians. Oh. They're like when white people say it, it's like like niggers in the back of their head, but they say nigger. Like something like that. It just rolls off the like when I hear a white person say it, it rolls off the tongue of you. And I'm just like it's just not for you. Like <laughs> you can't have it. It's just not for you. It's not working. Okay. Like yeah. you gotta chill. Like, it's not. I don't know. Like I'm not. I well. Okay. I have. I think I've only heard it maybe like once or whatever. But and I don't even think it was in person. I feel like it was like no, no, no. no I lied. I went to the Rolling Loud concert uh, or festival in Miami, and like Kendrick was there. Like you know, and so like a lot of white people felt comfortable. And this one white girl was walking out of the crowd and she was just like, man, them niggas over there, like, she's like, them niggas over there doing something stupid. And I instantly caught an attitude. Like, it bothered me. Because the context. The context yeah, too. like, because I'm like, okay, a lot of people here are act, like African American, obviously, um, but there's also a big population of like other races. But it was kind of just the, I don't know, it just, I guess I never really dealt with it in real life. And so I never really knew how I was going to react. And so hearing her say it made me very like, and so I instantly was just like, don't you ever say that word again in your life. And she looked at me and she was just like, oh no, like I didn't even, I was like, I don't care. I don't care how you meant it. It don't matter. Don't ever say it again. And she was just like, I'm sorry. Like I won't say it again. I mean, obviously she probably did when she walked away. Of course. But you know, I felt as if like, I like, you know. <laughs> it triggered you. Yeah, you know, and I'm just like, and I'm from Africa. Like, I was born in Africa. So it's not really something that really, really hit me, but it hit me. Okay. Yeah. Like you felt it. <laughs> I definitely understand that. I would say for me, it's like, obviously, going through college, I was kind of like an activist. Like, I did a lot of reading, a lot of black, oh, yeah. black power stuff. You Brian's, know, Brian's, oh, Brian's, you know, Brian's hotep moment. <laughs> I definitely had a hotep moment. Black and I'm black, y'all. I'm blickety black, blacker than black, black. I'm blacker than black, yo. That's why I like <laughs> stop following you on stuff. I was like, I ain't okay. <laughs> He it's was okay. cool. <laughs> I was. Oh, I was learning a lot, though. Learning a lot about myself. That's good. But um, I'll say today, my perspective on the word is, I feel as though we kind of give the word power. And if we're getting angry that another race is saying it, not only are we giving them our power, we're letting them inf have an influence on our emotions. And if we're thinking emotionally, we're not going to be able to think logically. So I feel as though we should kind of just forget the shit and just... Really just think about what's important right now. Things like getting our life together, building wealth, educating ourselves, and things of that nature. So, I don't know. I, you know, I've seen, like, incidents on social media where, um, like, people who have big pla platforms and stuff like that will, like, you know, slip up or whatever, as you can say, um, saying it, whether they're around their own friends and stuff like that. And people make such a huge deal about it. And me, I don't know, I always think that people on social media always pull everything out of proportion. But, like, I never get that offended when I see like I think there was like a YouTuber or something that they caught saying it and like everyone was really hounded her about it or something and she like did this whole like public apology and stuff and I just felt like it just wasn't necessary I was like okay obviously they were like oh like she just said it so smoothly so you know it's definitely something that she does on a regular and I was like well obviously like she's taking it in the context of like these are my friends like I'm not saying it to like be derogatory and like, I feel like when it comes to saying the N-word, it's the same way as saying, like, talking about, like, saying the word, like, retarded or something like that. It's like, you know when to say it and when not to say it. And that comes with pretty much anything. Like, I can't, obviously, like, I could, like, talk to one of my friends and just be like, oh, like, you acted retarded, like, just joking. But if there's actually someone in the room who has, like, special needs, I can't be like, oh, you acted retarded. Like, that's just obviously, it's just very taboo. And I think it's the same way as saying the N-word. So if you have black friends who are comfortable with you saying the n-word around them that's cool and all 
but don't go out into public and think that it's also okay because some people may not feel the same way if you know just know your surroundings and stuff but that's how i personally feel besides that incident at rolling loud people don't just don't try it with me <laughs> okay <laughs> okay all right i mean i don't know most of the white people that i'm usually around it's like corporate settings so it would be really weird for them to say it like, oh, yeah. that's an instant i'm calling it y'all <laughs> I'm ready to sue someone. Yes, she is. Emotional distress, twenty five hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> she want to judge Mathis? Yes. <laughs> okay. Judge Mathis. He gonna cuss you out. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So we're back to the N word. Um, you know, a lot of people always say like, okay, well, a lot of um, like Caucasians and stuff, people who feel as if everyone, sh- either everyone should say it or no one should say it at all, feel as if like, okay, because it's in rap music, a lot, like, what's the problem? You know, especially when they're singing songs. Like, so they're like, okay, it's one thing if I'm just saying in a conversation with my friends, but when I'm singing a song, why why do I have to like eliminate that word? If we're singing a song, I'm fine with you saying it. Like, it's just part of the lyric. I'm taking it as like that's part of their poetry, like the rapper's poetry. So you're just singing their poetry. You're singing their their lyrics. You're just saying what they're saying, and it's the same thing with singing. Like, I'm gonna sing the exact same thing you sing. What's the problem. But like, if you're like, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. So if we're like having a conversation, and you guys are white, and you just say like nigga to me, like, oh my nigga, like, no, no, we are not there, <laughs> you know. But that's what I'm saying again. It's like the whole you need to know who you're around. Yeah, yeah. you can't just because, um, you know, Hakeem that you're friends with <laughs> is like Hakeem. That's, I don't know the why. blackest name. <laughs> Um, you you know, can be George Hakeem. or Joe. I had to let you know it was a white. It was a black person. Anyways, so if Hakeem is okay with you saying it around him, and then you're coming around your like some new black people or like random black people, you can't be like, oh, like you know, my team or whatever, because it's like they don't know you. Yeah. If a perfect example is like um, episode of Atlanta. I think it was like episode one or two, no, two or something like that, where he goes and he's talking to some guy that he, I guess he used to work with or oh, went yeah. to school with or something. Mm-hmm. And the white guy is just like, talking about him like, oh yeah, I saw you. And he's like, and I'm just like, my nigga, this is that. And he was like saying it. Yeah. And so later on in the episode, he sees the white guy again, but this time he's with his like cousin and like mm-hmm. the other guy and they're in the car. And so he's like, oh, tell them that same story. And yeah. the white guy eliminated the N word. So it was like, he knew, cause he was like, okay, like it's who I'm around. But at the same time, it was like, um, Donald Glover was just like, okay, but we never even said that, like, we never said that before. Like, me, it's, I'm not comfortable with you saying the N-word, but he never really, like, approached him about it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just feel like white people would just be captain. White people do not know boundaries. <laughs> no, <laughs> no offense. Don't. But, Sorry, but as, like, a, a, um, as a race, I feel like Caucasians are definitely a lot more, they'll test it. Like, they'll, they don't mind testing the waters type of thing. And until you set that standard, they're gonna assume everything is okay. So if you're gonna people saying the N word, go for it. If you're not, let them know right off the bat. Like, don't, yeah. don't be doing that around me unless you want to catch this bait. <laughs> <laughs> catch this fade? Catch what it. do you mean? Like, oh my, like, what is a fade? fade? Like, like a haircut? Shadow. <laughs> so they shadow. don't even know if it's a haircut. <laughs> they think it's a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> What about Mexicans and I'm fine with Middle like and... just Mexicans or like no like how do you, you feel say about Mexicans? No, I say Mexicans. Oh, okay, because my mom says Mexicans and it bothers me. <laughs> Not a word. So how about like Hispanics, Middle Easterns, Indians, Asians, you know, Asians. minorities? I guess. I'm sorry, no, like Asians. Asians, I feel like closer to white. Um, Asians are just a whole nother like <laughs> spectrum of their own. And get out there with the white people. So, mm. <laughs> <was your> <laughs> we're basing everything off Get Out. Yes. Get Out is the Bible. So, um, <laughs> Jordan Peele wrote it. He's Jewish now. I'm dead. Okay, well. Sorry. <laughs> God. I'm really just kind of took God, it. I'm just really sorry that such a terrible person would say something like that <laughs> to you. Just don't even think. Just don't even. Of all the blasphemy going on in this lifetime, come on now. <laughs> Um, so you're not okay with like other minorities saying it? I am. Um, like Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, Latinos. Um, I'm fine with them saying it because they have black in them majority of the time. Um, it's mixed in there somewhere. Um, Asians. 
they pushing it. All right. Mm. It depends on who they are <laughs> and how they say it, like where they grew up and that kind of thing. Like if they grew up around like you know black people, I think it's all right. Maybe. But can you say that about white people also? What about white people who grew up in LA? No. <laughs> it's like you know. So if they've been like <laughs> legit, grew up on maybe like on the west side. West Side Chicago. You can't say it in front of me. Because um, we all had the same books in school. And but the, it what? was the same skin color that we had to learn about that did the bad things. So, um, that person that exactly. You got down the West Side, <laughs> you got down the South Side. So all, we all learned the same thing. So. So, so what about like the newer generation kids is growing up where, have you seen like, um, how textbooks are now altered nowadays to kind of minimize what slavery was or what like the genocide against the Native Americans were. So what about those generations growing up saying the N word? They maybe have learned something different than what we did growing up. What do you think about that? Okay, one, that's a different conversation because I feel that's on the parents to educate them because the school is lacking. And then two. No, if you white, you still can't say it. <laughs> like, you do not get that privilege. You cannot have that. You they get can't, everything so else. Because just trying to go off of everything you said. So it's not okay for white people to say it in regular conversation. But if they're just singing a song. If they're singing fine. a song. And I hear that they are singing a song. Like, the song is on. Now they're just, like, rapping some random lyrics. Then, okay. Like, I can't, I can't fault you. But if we're, like, having a conversation... And it just like you just you say it, then it's like I'm not comfortable with that, sir. I'm, I'm not. I'm calling it, child. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me just write this down. I'm calling it. Call this instance in really quick. Okay. Uh, I've never really had an issue because I've noticed on Twitter like it's like a big thing. People are just like, oh, like I feel like if you're not black, like you shouldn't be saying the N word. And I just feel like people just take it a little too far. Like I don't think it's that serious, especially with like other minorities. It's kind of just like I mean. Yeah, they weren't necessarily called, like, that word back in the day, but I feel like it's, it's like, a symbol of just, like, we've all struggled, you know? Like, we're all kind of looked at <laughs> as, like, the low, like, low on the totem pole, like, in yeah. this, in this country right now, so. Well, okay, how about this? How do you feel about black people, as just, like, just, like, the race of, like, just being black, um, that are overseas? Like, you know, whether it's, like, um, British blacks or, like, Australian people who are black or, like... You know, how do you feel about them saying that word? Because I've heard that that's been a. Why are you? She asking you. I'm asking too? you because I said I don't really care. Yeah, you about said you're fine word. with it. I don't care. I'm kind of over it at this point. I'm not, <laughs> I refuse to give my power to another person. I refuse to give someone a loaded gun to shoot me with. I mean, I'm not gonna like jack off on them or anything. I'm not gonna like go off on them. But it's gonna evoke. So if you, you hear emotion. a British person just being like. Oh, like, oh, like, my name. One, it don't even sound the same when they say nigger or nigga. Nigga. My nigga. My nigga. My nigga. I don't even know how to say it. We're not trying to tell y'all. Y'all accents actually. That's not even how we say it. I'm actually going to London this summer. Wow. That's how you drop it on me? In front of the camera? Yeah. I do not. I'm quite broke. Please do not. Actually, could y'all send me money? My cash app is down in the description box below. I'm joking. Anyways, so, so you have, do you, you said you have kind of like your little on the fence about, about people who aren't your man are saying the N word that are black? I don't. Why would you be on the fence though? I like, wouldn't. That's why I'm like, but it's like, a lot of people are though. Like, yeah, they're super I don't like, really? they feel like, yeah, like they should only be they black and like the who should be saying it. Like, even they wouldn't even think it was okay for me to say it. Wow. Because they're just like, it's, it's a thing, it's a word that was, that they were using for, um, black Americans or like you know people like during slavery times who were in America not overseas and stuff so it's like weird and I just like that's just putting so many restrictions on it for no reason yeah. that's just that's making it at that point complex. don't know why they even say it yeah I feel like that's very stupid because darker skinned people are literally oppressed everywhere, everywhere you go everywhere everywhere yeah. I sometimes feel like you know the um what is the name what is that word the um like the ugly friend out of like my group of friends sometimes because I'm oh, the duff. Yes, the duff. I mean, even though I'm pretty sure I look better than all my friends. No offense to you guys. You guys know this. Guys. Yeah, but um, not me. <laughs> you see this? Definitely. Beaming. Beaming. 
Let me move my bang so I can hear you. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Anyways, no, but I, but I definitely. Wow, we're like going into a whole nother like conversation, which is fine. But should have started with this. <laughs> the colorism <laughs> thing. Colorism. Let's talk Shout about. Shout out that. to Amara La Negra. Yeah, no, yeah, Jeez. for sure. That's her name. That's her name. What are you? She's a, she's in love and hip hop. She's Afro Latino. Yeah, or Latina. Because that's a big conversation. Wow. <laughs> 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 See, this is the problem in America. Well, if you don't That's get this, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> your face get like this. Dead ass. Oh my god. <laughs> One, I minored in Spanish, so. What does that mean? I that studied you, Spanish. I don't know Spanish. But I studied it. I studied Spanish culture. Um, I am, what's your face? It was a part of the NAACP, the white lady. Uh, what is her name? Um, no, the lady that was like, yeah, like, like in her hair. Yeah. I'm not forgetting her name. Uh, it says she's black now. She's not black. She it came was, out that she's she white. Like, just found out who she was white, like not that long ago. Like, what is her name? Oh, I thought y'all was talking about the white lady that claims she's black. Yeah, yes. she did claim she was black. What's her name? Mm, I don't know. I just forgot. What that lady? About, yeah, yeah, I'm her. For that's why everyone started Hunter. the whole like I'm actually um. A Caucasian male with like 35 year old white man. That's what you oh look like God. stirring this wine. There are ways. No, um, but okay, so we're just kind of drifting into like colorism. And colorism is such a huge thing, and I just get so annoyed when people pretend as if it's not. It's funny because we're all technically on like the darker spectrum of like, you know, the color wheel when it comes to black people. And um, I mean, obviously, it goes all back to slavery when they had like the lighter skin, um, you know, slaves in the house, and they had the darker skin ones out in the field because, you know, trying to separate us and whatnot. And it's so, it's so crazy because I feel like a lot of men pretend as if they they don't have um, what is the word I'm looking for? They don't have a uh, like they're not biased towards women because of their color, but they definitely are. So, and it even comes, it even goes along with, like, hair texture and all that type of stuff. Because I remember when I used to have, like, my curly hair, when I tell you, like, all the dudes, you know, like, and I need to even let me let your hair. Is that what they did? Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Like, they were just, you know, super, like, okay. Know how true that is. Before they even, <laughs> <laughs> I was super cute. I'm going to post a, a picture of it here. That was quite pretty. Um, anyways. She looked like she I am actually. Sometimes I look like right. Anyways, so like they like bef before they even saw what it is that. What did you say? And that's beautiful. If you look like him. Ooh, it's a scary <laughs> sight. <laughs> um, but before they even like actually saw my face, it would be like, a, oh, okay, like I see a curly haired girl, and they assume that I'm like light skinned until I turn around, and they're just like, oh, actually, you're not. And I mean, not that they would be like, uh, but. But, um, obviously, it kind of, you know, it make me think about the fact that, wow, like, men really do have this, you know, bias towards women who are dark-skinned and stuff, simply because of the fact that we're dark-skinned. It's nothing that we can, like, help. Um, and it's gotten to the point where, like, women bleach their skin just to be, like, lighter and stuff and, you know, go through, like, health complications just because they want to, like, fit into, I guess, the right stigma. And it sucks. I don't know, like sucks but I don't know I, I've learned to accept my skin color for what it is because I think I did go through a period of time especially in Nigeria it is a huge thing like skin lightening products are a big finesse like people sell those things like crazy we want to lighten their skin da, da, da. Um, and I remember when I was younger my mom being as light as she is like my mom is very very light skin and I always used to be like, oh, like we always used to make jokes like, oh, why didn't you give us like your skin color? Like, why didn't you do this, that, and the other? And um, I've just kind of learned that, you know, I don't need her skin color. Like, I'm pretty much, like, I'm good the way I am. You know, my skin is perfectly fine the way that it is. My, me being a darker skin woman compared to her, because I think on like the spectrum of like dark skin women I am, I'm definitely on like the lighter end. Because I can't say like, oh, I'm super chalky. Maybe not. <laughs> but, um, I, I have just kind of learned to just like accept the fact that I'm not everyone's preference and it's fine because there are still people out there who actually like my, my, you know, my complexion, but I think that people do need to learn that just because someone is light skin does not mean that they're like the prettiest person in the world or like it's like whatever, it's like it's better. Um, I don't know, maybe that's not 
feel like I just like went on a little bit of like rant. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so I did go through that like prejudice in college a lot because I had a friend um, that was lighter skin that I always go out with. And all the guys were like, like rush to talk to her and not to say I'm cuter, <laughs> but, um, That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> not to say that I'm like the cutest one between like all my friends or anything, but like, you know, cause I am, you're not even here. No one even knows you. <laughs> okay. okay. I've been to you a lot several times. Damn near my second time. What was I supposed to be like? I'm friends with, I'm friends with Z. I'm friends with Z. Guys, come on now. They still didn't watch it, but it's mm. okay. Anyways, I'm ready to hang on my lip. Okay. I didn't want any more? No, I didn't want any more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to make me feel bad. You should feel bad. You didn't even ask. I just drooled. I'm that. That's why they didn't talk to you, because you drool. <laughs> they saw it already. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> Anyways. So, but, yeah, and it, I'm not... Like you said, I'm not the darkest. Um, like, really, I'm, I'm really not. Like on the yeah, like on the spectrum of like darker skinned women. Obviously, we're like more on, or so on like the lighter end. Yeah, like than, the brown. Yeah, that's what we use. Closer to caramel, I guess. But regardless, like it's just like if you're not, you know, out here looking like I don't know, Sanaa Lathan or something, or like TT Sanaa. I'm trying to think of like who else is a little bit like darker than her, but still on like a light lighter skin so no, like, spectrum. Pretty light. Like, she's pretty tan, like of tan, like skin. Like Regina Hall? Uh, she's, she's lighter. Not than Sanaa. I'm saying Sanaa is lighter than Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like darker skin women just started becoming more of like, um, it's like a, like a nice aesthetic to have, or like, you know, now. Um, but the part that blows me, though, about darker skin women being so in now is that people seem to only really like them when it's like they're all oiled up in a photo shoot, you know, in like bright colors or something. But if it's like still in person, people still have that, ugh, like I'm not really, they'll still go for a lighter skinned person before they go for a darker skinned person. And it's kind of just like, I mean, yeah, everyone has their preference, but I feel like it's just such a, it's like a, um, a generational bias. Is that a word? Kind of like a fetish kind of thing. Yeah. I would say, what do you guys think that the root of this colorism issue comes from? I would assume it's just like from the whole slavery thing. Like making it seem as if like people who are lighter skin are like more wanted because they were in the house. Or, or like, like genetically better. Yeah. Because they have lighter skin. Which is crazy because technically dark people have better skin. I'm almost, almost more melanin. I blame uh, my dad. I don't know. I think for me... Um, you know her friend's light skin. Yeah. But she's well, gorgeous. I love her. I would say, just thinking back on the whole slavery thing, I feel as though maybe it wasn't really like a light versus dark skin thing when it came to people being in the house versus in the fields. Um, being that the slave masters usually raped the black women, um, so if the black women had ch children of the slave masters, obviously they were gonna be of a lighter complexion. And since they were descendants of the slave master, he would rather have them working in the house rather than the field because that's a part of him. I thought that, just from what I've learned about like slavery and stuff, I thought that was a thing that they purposely did mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of separate like black people in general was to have like those who were even lighter. Because I mean, obviously like light skinned people didn't come from, you know, the mixture of like your slave master having sex with like, you know, darker skinned slaves or whatever. They were definitely lighter skinned like yeah, African Americans exactly like light. in, you know. But um I guess like I'm I don't know, it's kinda just like, yeah, I understand that, but at the same time it's like didn't it, wasn't there I remember a story specifically being told about how there was someone who was selling slaves saying like, oh, let's divide them by their... You mean like their... the Willie Lynch letter? Is that what yeah, you're I think that's about? what it was, yeah. yeah. I don't really know if like that's like totally true because I'm skeptical about a lot of a lot of different stuff because you never really know. Your Nowadays, days are gone. No, I mean like you never, <laughs> you never really know whether it's anything is fact or fiction, especially true. nowadays with Photoshop and all this and that and the internet. You People never, still believe you never really the, first, know. the first president of the United States was a black man. We didn't even have cameras back then, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. It, I just wish that, you know, people kind of... How do I put this? 
it's like I I've noticed a lot on social media that people are so drawn to more um, Eurocentric features and they love it when they see it on black people and I just want us to get to the point where we love our African features or like you know our um, you know what is what I'm looking for I wouldn't say ethnic because it's like everything but um just you know our big noses our big lips and like all the stuff that comes with being a black person and loving that outside of social media in person because people can all you can get all the loves all the likes or whatever on social media but once it comes to like actually like going out and stuff people are so you know the black woman is such a especially the darker skinned black woman is such a uh, like I'm not sure she just seems a little aggressive like her lips are really big or like this that and the other her nose which wide. I never understood like how is a facial feature aggressive like but, but your the, nose and your mouth like how but the thing though, tone, like, but the thing though is but honestly it's it's kind of like a um what is what I'm looking for it's like a like a trained thing it's the same way as like yeah, saying as how they say like when you see something that's white, you think of something good. When you see something that's like black, you see it's kind of like oh, it's a little evil. Like, oh, like the, the, the the color red is seems a little like kind of like demonic or like a little ooh. But then the color like um, yellow is like very like oh sunny bright like you know pretty flowers. Da, da, da. And it's just a, like a trained thing that we've all like kind of gone through or conditioned. I mean, is what I'm looking for. So like I don't know I, how do I what was I where was I going with this? I don't even know. <laughs> I just like lost my train of thought. Um, but when it comes to like the way that facial features are structured, being a Nigerian person, like I, I can tell when someone is Nigerian, or at least I would think that someone is Nigerian because their facial features are a lot more defined than those of African Americans in America. So can you tell? Right? Yeah. You said what? No, you guys don't. I, so to me personally, think I'm Nigerian? I don't know. Probably because you be around me a lot. Not. But Nigerian. it's because of the fact that, like, if you do see a lot of African, like, African people from Africa, they do have more defined facial features. Whether it's, like, their their face, like, is just a lot more chiseled, um, their nose is, like, a little different, their eyes are very different, um, and I feel like African Americans in America, it's, it's a lot more softer, just from, like, the mixture of, like, whites and, you know, all that other stuff. And it all really depends on the temperature and, like, you know, all that stuff, too, so, you know. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> I would say, say I definitely agree that we've been conditioned to feel a certain way about lighter or dark skinned individuals. Because the media is, man, the media is very powerful. Um, a lot of people don't realize what they put into their bodies, whether it's in the form of television or uh, listening to music. It impacts you in a way that you may not distinctly be able to tell right away. Because um, your subconscious is really who you are and what you think rather than your actual conscious thoughts. So you gotta really pay attention to that. Um, I, I've, I can say for me personally, I definitely grew up, um, even though I usually dated dark skinned women, um, obviously I was conditioned to have a preference for lighter skinned women. You know, growing up you hear about the rappers talking about, oh, it's foreign, blah, 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 and things of that nature. So I don't know. That definitely kind of conditioned me to think a certain way and to really kind of unlearn that behavior. For me, I just got on Instagram and I just started following a lot of different pages that cater to darker skinned individuals, darker skinned families and things of that nature. Because if you watch TV all day, you're going to see, even if it's actually black people on the show, you're going to see lighter skinned black people rather than darker skinned black people. 3C hair, <laughs> curls, True. and like... And it's like, oh, that's our diversity. And it's just like, yeah, that's hating our hair. Yeah, you know, because I, man, managing my hair is something else. But it, it's it, it's so funny that you say that because, um, like, I, my preference for when I want to, like, when I'm interested in a guy, and it's be, I prefer lighter skinned men. And I don't know, it's just like, I'm just, just, it's the first thing when I see them, it's like my eyes just directly go to that. And sometimes it bothers me because I'm just like, why am I not the same way about darker skinned men. I mean, I'm definitely attracted to darker skinned men, but I feel like it takes me a little bit more time to like be actually interested versus if I see a light skin, I'm just like, oh, look, he's cute. Instantly attracted, yeah. you know? And sometimes I tell myself that maybe I want to date a guy that kind of rides me with my mom or something. Yeah. Like I love my mom and she's like very light skinned, but then I, I think about like, okay, well, 
still like what if there's a dark skin guy that reminds me of my mom like why am I not the same way but I don't know yes I I I'm definitely one of the people who like follows like a lot of um, darker skin women like on Instagram or um, pages that cater to like darker skin women and stuff because it does help me even with my own self-confidence because I think that when I was younger I used to um always look at lighter skin women and want to be like oh I want to look like that or I want to do like th like be like that and it made me very insecure for a really long time until I started seeing like women who looked like me and then people were just like oh like she's pretty and I was just like you know what she is really pretty like I'm pretty <laughs> like so it's like <laughs> you know so for girls like that are out there who are struggling with trying to find their own self-confidence and looking because I mean especially in the day, like the day and age that we are social media is such a big thing um Make sure that you are following people who, who remind you of yourself, who look like you, because that's a great way to build your own confidence within yourself before, instead of looking out to see, you know, to try to like, I don't know, like think about, oh, okay, like there's this, everyone loves this one person, but she doesn't look anything like me. It's going to make you feel bad about yourself because you're just like, oh, I don't have the same nose, I don't have the same hair texture, I don't have this, that, and the other. And you're going to nitpick at yourself to the point where you hate yourself and you don't want that. Um, I don't know. I've, it's colorism is crazy. It is. It is. It's a crazy, like weird drug that we all go through, and I don't know. Like, I get sometimes I get a little upset if like I'm interested in a guy, and he happens to be light skinned and like he goes for like a light skinned girl instead of me, and I'm just kind of just like, oh. it's colorist. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? Is that okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But. Do you have any thoughts on it, Shmari? Wait, hold on. You just threw a lot at me in a moment. Because <laughs> you were talking, and I was like, yeah, I could say something there. And then you kept going, and I was like, mm, okay, hold on. Now I gotta go back. Okay, so yeah. When I'm looking at guys, like, I definitely, like, my eyes attracted to light skin men, and my father is really light skin. Mm. So I don't know if it's like that or society. I feel like it might be both. So, um, I do try to, you know, fairly look at each, each color, each part of the category. Um, but it, it's it's hard to like fight what you, what's your instincts, you know? Um, what are your instincts coming from the fact that you've been conditioned to? Yes, exactly. Way? Yeah, it's just like trying to unlearn something. Mm -hmm. Like it definitely takes time. It's not like I would only date like light skinned guys. I my longtime boyfriend was not light skinned at all. He was not light skinned. That boy was. Like, we had the same color. Yeah. No, no, no. Guess, As a man, I know you said like you know you were always kind of like you always used to date dark, darker skinned women or whatever. But now you're with a lighter skinned girl, which is perfectly. I mean, yeah, no, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, I don't know why I was just like, why I just say that. No, 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 no. But okay, so have you? Did you say that? Have you ever like had like a bias before? I like, guess that. As a man, tell us. I don't really think so. Um, I would say I've always been, I always, I've always dated darker skin. So this is literally, Shaka's the first um, light skinned woman that I dated. Hey, so, Shaka. That's why I feel as though I never really had a bias. Uh, but it really came from me trying to unlearn what I was conditioned to see as far as in the media and things of that nature. So I feel it feels as though maybe if I continue down, down that road of just like being conditioned without kind of unlearning that behavior, maybe I would have a bias. But because of the work I felt did to kind of change my thinking, I don't. But I can definitely see how it's just crazy in the media and just in general where maybe somebody or see a even someone see a light skinned black girl and say like. Oh, you must be mixed or something like that. Like being mixed is better than just being black or yeah. something like that. We automatically assume that it's, a person is something just based off the way they look. It's crazy. Yeah, that is. I wow. I I definitely feel that because well, people would automatically assume. Well, people would be like, oh, um, when I would say that I was Nigerian, like African, they would be like so shocked and it was weird. I always thought that was just such a weird thing. Like, what is like, what's the, why is it weird that, like, you didn't know that I was African? Or why is it weird that I am African? And they were like, oh, like, you just don't look African. And I'm just like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> like, is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? You know, 
and like now I understand it because like like I was saying before I feel like African American or like Africans from Africa look their features are a lot stronger than those of African Americans in um, America and so like I kind of understand it but at the same time it's just like I think the wording of certain things that people like we say nowadays needs to change to not sound as harsh um and people kind of just have to like it's the same way as like if you know you go to a family event they're just like oh like you them gay away or like you know you know just how they just just so <laughs> but um I don't know I I just kind of just wish that especially as black people because of the things that we face on a regular with you know Hispanic racism and all that other stuff colorism is just such an annoying issue to be dealing with in our community because we have so many bigger problems the fact that there is no such thing as generational wealth in our community um but we literally black women um, are literally dealing with being women and also being black at the same time um we are not getting paid the same as our co-workers there's just so many other things that we just be worrying about than people having these petty biases against skin color um at the end of the day there's nothing definitely there's nothing wrong with having your preference as far as like what you're attracted to no one can stop you from that but what you have to understand is that you cannot bash one skin color to then uplift another and that's with any situation so if you are interested in lighter skin women and that's your preference that's perfectly fine but do not call a darker skin woman ugly just to say that a lighter skin woman is pretty or like vice versa. yeah or vice versa like it's that's not okay just say that you like this and call it a day okay i would say it's also very important to note that as a whole as black people we've never really had the chance to heal ourselves from slavery and from all of the oppression that we've been dealing with for the last 400 years so I, you kind of have to give people the benefit of the doubt the benefit of the doubt because you really don't know if they fully heal and chances are they haven't um because black people we as a whole we really don't go to therapy or anything of that nature and speaking on the generational wealth thing it's like i read somewhere that i don't even remember exactly but um, i think it's like it takes about three generations to build generational wealth mm -hmm. and jim crow was what when did that end like 70s yeah. like 40 Early years 70s, ago late 60s. that's not even half a generation so we have a long way to go it's just as far as our fight for equality as well as gener um, generating generational wealth but it all starts with us right now yeah that's true um, make sure you're investing yeah like. definitely um I think one th one thing we don't even realize that we go to school for 16 years if we go get a bachelor's degree, and throughout that whole time we don't even really learn about finances. Okay. So we have to take that upon ourselves to learn. So we need to be reading about uh, managing our finance and things of that nature. Because if not, we're going to get stuck in a rat race, and we're going to be working for wages. And a lot of people don't realize that when you're working for wages, you get penalized the most when it comes to taxes and when it comes to life in general. Um, America really reward, and the world really rewards those who are investors, those who are business owners and things of that nature. So we got to stop having our sole source of income be wages and start diversifying our streams of income. That's true. I don't know if any of you guys watch the show Blackish. They do talk about this stuff. I love Blackish. Um, there's like an episode where he talks about how inheritance and like how a lot of African Americans or even maybe other ethnicities or minorities specifically don't really have like something for their kids to inherit. Whereas like a lot of Caucasians do, whether it's land, whether it's a business or something. But it's like you want to start now to make sure that you are leaving something for like a legacy pretty much. You know, whether it is maybe, you know, a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is when you die for people later on in your life, you know, start a business. All right, everyone. So that was the end of the show. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And we're so glad that you were able to tune in. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, support, share it, whatever you feel like you need to do to show us the love or not show us the love, show us the hate, whatever. We love you too. Yeah, make sure you guys follow us on social media just to kind of keep yourself updated on everything that we're doing. We'll let you know about what drinks we're going to make and all that jazz. Make sure that you follow any of the guests that you see on the show. Down there, All the information is down in the description box below. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye. Bye.